Yo, 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 yo. Episode 12. Everybody, welcome back. We got a dope episode this week. Uh, but before we get into the episode and kind of like the reasoning behind the guest and just everything about it, uh, we finally got a look at Jason Tatum's uh, backslash neck piece that he got. And he's continuing to add to that. And, and everyone in the comments was saying, you guys, first of all, you guys went fucking crazy on that post. That's at like 20K. So good shit on that. But everybody's saying like, you know, Tatum's up there. Tatum, and I agree. I think Tatum is going crazy with that. Tatum and Steve. Uh, are really putting in work on that back piece. Um, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, and I'm super excited to see him kind of finish that off. We're seeing a shit ton of guys right now in the league uh, kind of have get COVID and, and go into the safety protocols and whatnot. So, I mean, maybe there's a pause of the NBA in the future coming, and, and that could mean a lot more tattoos, uh, which definitely does benefit our little community. Um, but it always sucks not seeing, uh, you know, your favorite players down on the court. So I hope everyone is well with, all of that. Now, getting into the episode, uh, we talked to Shane Larkin. Uh, definitely a familiar name if you're a basketball uh, guy. If you're a basketball junkie, you know who Shane Larkin is. Shane Larkin was an absolute monster in Miami in college. Uh, came into the league, played for a few teams, and then now is playing overseas at an MVP level. Um, Shane gave insight on a bunch of different things. Shane's dad was in the MLB. He was a hall of he's a Hall of Famer. He was an MVP world series champion so we talked about you know growing up with a dad like that and then we also just got a perspective like a different perspective you know we spoke to 11 other nba guys and and this time we got to talk to a guy that one was in the league a little earlier than some of our other guests and then two has the perspective of playing overseas and having like that overseas look on just art uh tattoos and and you know tattoos in the euro league and, and art uh in europe in general and just overseas so I really like this episode. I think it was a totally different perspective than what we normally have. So I hope you guys like it as much as I did. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Peace. What's up, guys? This is your host, Matt Mangano. Make sure to follow, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. And we also have a YouTube channel, so head over to YouTube and hit that subscribe button. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Inked NBA Podcast. We're here today with an overseas legend, Miami legend, Shane Larkin. What's going on, bro? What's good, bro? What's good? I'm glad you came on today. I'm excited about this one. Uh, you're kind of the first overseas guy that we were having on here, and, and I wanted to do that, like, branch out, and I wanted to, to kind of get you on here because uh, of one of the recent pieces you got. Um, it was, what, over the summer, right? Is when you got the piece yeah. last summer? Yeah. So uh, what if, if you're listening to this and you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about uh, Shane recently just got a – uh, tribute to his dad um, and just the city of Cincinnati uh, on his leg. So can you talk to me, run me through like the entire process of kind of that tattoo, what went into it, like the thought process and all that? Um, so I had been wanting to do something about my hometown. Uh, you know, I was born in Cincinnati, moved to Florida when I was young, but you know, my heart is always going to be in Cincinnati. Um, and I wanted to do something uh, around the city. And obviously, my dad was from Cincinnati, born in Cincinnati, raised in Cincinnati, played for Cincinnati. Um, my yeah. entire family is from there. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give a tribute back to where I'm from, you know, and I wanted to put it on my leg because that's kind of like the roots of who you are, you know, to carry you around. So I always can fall back on that. And um, it actually was a, a long process. I have been trying to figure out exactly what the piece, what I wanted it to look like uh, for about a year. Um, and then, you know, I, I met up with a guy up in, in New York um, at Bang Bang. And uh, we kind of just sat there over a couple of FaceTimes. And then when we were in person, it kind of just ran ideas back and forth. Um, and then it kind of came together like that. Uh, I kind of gave him a, an idea of what I was looking to do. And then we kind of just bounced off each other. And uh, the piece kind of came to life like that. And that was, uh, you linked up with Keith, right? Hernandez? Yeah, yeah. And how did you guys, how did you go about like kind of finding him? Cause that's like a, you know what I'm saying? Like bang, bang. And just that whole studio is like yeah. prestigious in, in their work. Yeah. So um, I actually got a piece on my back from another artist at bang, bang uh, about two summers ago. And um, I have a good ma uh, relationship with the manager of the store. And I actually mm -hmm. texted him and I told him my idea first and what uh, I was trying to look to do. And um, he uh, kind of pointed me in the direction of Keith. He said, you know, these are a couple of the guys that, 
I think will be able to give you exactly what you're looking for with your piece. And um, he sent me their Instagrams. You know, I looked at everybody's Instagrams and then I saw Keith's mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, Dez is dope. So I, I want to try to get with him. He connected us via text. Uh, then we got on FaceTime. Uh, the first time we talked, I was actually still in Istanbul. Um, but then, you know, I had a couple conversations. And then when I got back this summer, I uh, went up there for a couple of days and, and we, you know, put it together. So a couple of days. So talk to me about that. How long is the, is the, was the sessions or did you break it up? Like how long were you under the needle for that tattoo? Um, so it was about two days. Um, and under the needle, probably about four to five hours each day. But um, the other okay. hour or an hour and a half, two hours of the day was just trying to figure out, you know, placement. Because, um, mm -hmm. you know, it was a, a spot on your leg where he wanted everything to kind of flow the right way. Uh, so we we're trying to figure out placement, the size of things, what we went, what we needed to get, to, you know, fill up some of the empty spots. Um, so um, each day probably was probably, you know, between six to eight hours all together. So two days, uh, about six to eight hours each day. Okay, that's dope. And how did what was your your kind of dad's reaction? I feel like that's got to be super like dope and like surreal for him. You know, your son goes out and gets a tattoo of of you on him. How did how did he feel about it? Uh, I mean, he was shocked at first. Um, I didn't tell him about it. I didn't tell my parents. And then I, I went to that uh, penthouse in Miami and I just kind of pulled up with the tattoo. And then he was just speechless mm -hmm. for about, you know, a minute and a half. He was he was teary eyed a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, so cool. it was a good moment. Um, you know, he's done a lot for me, for my life, for my family. You know, he, you know, didn't grow up the way that I did. And, you know, that's because of him. So um you know he's come a long way and i'm really proud of him and you know you see all these guys getting not all of them but a lot of guys get some of their heroes uh tatted on them like recently a lot of guys getting muhammad ali some guys yeah. got the ai tat some of guys got the barack obama tats now and, you know i kind of like those trends and how those guys are going about it but i wanted to kind of make my own you know my own sports hero you know so mm -hmm. i think you know all the things that he's done for his career hall of famer and all those things also, you know, being pops, you know, I think that was just a, a good way to commemorate him and, um, you know, pay tribute to all that he's done for me in my life. For sure. And um, when was so growing up, like you're saying, you you grew up with with a dad in the uh, in the in the MLB, you know, top star, uh, Hall of Famer, like you said, when when for you, when you were like a kid, when were you kind of like, like, oh, shit, my dad's like famous, like, like, like my dad's in the MLB. Uh, it was probably around five, six years old um, when I, I was able to go to the ballpark with him, you know, before games, mm -hmm. after games. And then when we'd be leaving the ballpark after the games, you know, just driving out, you think you're just with your dad. And then there's, you know, hundreds of fans banging on the car, trying yeah, to get yeah. photos and autographs and all these things. And that's when I started to understand that he was somebody. I didn't mm -hmm. know how great he was or what kind of caliber he was. I just knew he was a dad. But when I started seeing all these things happen and I kind of started to put together that he was somebody special. Um, he must've been really good at what he did. Um, so it was about probably five or six when I started to realize, you know, how good he was uh, at what he was doing. And so is there any, is there any tattoo like influence from being around like those guys, like just, you know, ball players, like guys that were kind of during that time started to play around with getting tattoos and bringing that into like the, the spotlight of, of sports? Like, did you get any influence or, or like see a guy with tattoos when you were at the clubhouse and be like, Oh, like, that's kind of dope. What is that? Um, not necessarily because baseball is different. You know, I mean, now there's some baseball guys that are getting, you know, sleeved up and getting a lot of tattoos. But back then, um, you know, I don't know if anybody on my dad's team had uh, tattoos that I looked at. And I was like, yo, that's really cool. I, I'd like to do that one day. I can't actually think of anybody who had had, had those kind of tattoos. So, uh, I mean, around then, I wouldn't say anybody from his team directly influenced mm -hmm. me. But, you know, I was always a, a football guy and a basketball guy. So, you know, I saw all of the tattoos in, in that kind of world. Um, and that's what kind of inspired me to, you know, put, you know, tattoos on my body that mean things and, you know, resonate with what makes me who I am. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of kind of where I drew my influence from. And is there any particular influence, like any, any, you said football, basketball, any uh, specific player or like artists, music industry, anything like that? Uh, I wouldn't say artists in the, in the music industry. I would say more it's just basketball guys. You know, my, my guy was AI. 
that had mm-hmm. always been my guy. I had the cornrows, the braids, the armbands, yeah, the yeah. shoes. You know, I had all of it. So, you know, his tattoos, you know, he had a bunch of tattoos. He didn't, I mean, he was kind of sleeved up, you know, but he had like a bunch of kind of just tattoos Different all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, little pieces all over. And um, I always thought that was really cool. And, um, you know, that was my guy always. So that's probably the guy who influenced me the most to, you know, if I was able to do this basketball thing, the, one, the way I wanted to be able to do it, um, I was definitely going to try to, you know, get some tattoos to, you know, be that way. So what was, uh, what was the first, when was the first time that you, you got tatted? How old were you? Uh, and like run me through that whole story. What, what happened with that? Uh, so I was, I think I was 16, 16 turning 17. And um, my sister is a really creative girl. Uh, and I had been telling her to, to draw me a tattoo, to like, mm-hmm. get a piece of paper and draw me a tattoo. And I kind of told her exactly what I was looking for. And then I kind of got my mom into it. I asked her if she would like, like, is it okay if I get a tattoo? And she was like, hell no, you can't get no tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I ran it past my dad and he was like, I mean, if you want to get, get a tattoo, sure, you know, get a tattoo. And um, yeah. so I asked my sister to, to draw up this piece. And, uh, and then she drew up this piece. And, um, you know, one day she brought it to me and I was like, oh, this is super cool. This is dope. And I actually brought it to my dad and I was like, yo, I want to get this tatted. And he was like, mm-hmm. you do? And he was, I was like, yeah, I want to get it tatted. He's like, all right, let's go. I was like, what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. And so we got in the car, went to some random, random tattoo artist in Orlando. And um, I gave him a piece of paper and he was like, all right, that's what you want. And yeah, he put it right on my arm the same way my sister drew it. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't say it's my most quality piece uh, it was my first piece when i was young but you know i would mm-hmm. say that one probably means i mean now probably second most to me because it's actually my sister's artwork that i put on my body um so you know that, that that's obviously something that's that's close to my heart so um that's really how it came together it was just bang 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 i, I kind of thought he was yeah. joking at first but you know, he was serious and you know, i wasn't gonna say no after that so what was what was your mom's reaction then? You you went, uh, you know, after she said no. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't too happy when I got back to the house. Um, but I mean, she she's grown to you know uh, appreciate the art of it. At first, she mm-hmm. was just like, "Don't mark your body up and you know look like nope. a look like you out here crazy." I was like, "Nah, I mean, I got it for this reason. My sister drew it, blah blah blah." So. She was okay with it. Uh, and then, mm-hmm. you know, once I started coming home with more and more, she was just like, you know, I, I have to appreciate what it, what it's for and, you know, the meaning behind it as opposed to, you know, all the negative things that people say about them. So she's yeah. cool enough. I think, I think like, like you're saying uh, with like even the mom perspective, cause I feel like everyone kind of goes through that uh, whether it's a mom, dad, just having a parent that's kind of like against it at first. Uh, and then is able to adapt to it. I think we're seeing that just overall in like the culture yeah. as well, where people are just kind of being like, like, all right, like, you know, it's not because you're a thug. It's not because you're this right. or that. It's because you're, you're right. kind of expressing yourself. So right. that's yeah. super dope that that's happening. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's like a generation thing, you know, my, my dad doesn't have any tattoos. My mom don't have any tattoos. None of their brothers or sisters have tattoos. So, you know, it's more like I think just a generation thing. I don't think in their in their time when they were doing their thing in our in our age, it wasn't like you know expressing yourself through hard work and tattoos and all these things. The freedom to express yourself was just different. It was a different time. So, yeah, um, like you said, it's really dope that you know they've accepted it now and you know are kind of changing with the culture. And you know now I got a bunch of tattoos. My sister's got a bunch of tattoos. So that's all good. That's dope. So for, for you, when you made the transition, uh, you know, from the U.S. to then going overseas, obviously there's got to be a big like cultural difference and things like that. But in terms of, of the tattoo scene and like the, the art scene like that, I feel like there's definitely a different style when it comes to yeah. like overseas pieces, overseas like tattoos sure. than in the U.S. So talk to me a little bit about that. Um, well, there's definitely a, a different type of style over here uh, that you see. Uh, especially in Turkey, you know, Turkey, a lot of people have tattoos. Um, mm-hmm. I would say they're more like historical type of tattoos uh, of things that happen in history, um, a lot of like Roman stuff. Um, and it's not as, you know, I, w- I wouldn't say it's as personal as, you know, some of the tattoos that people get in the States. Um, mm-hmm. But the culture is, 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 is huge here. You know, there's a lot of dope artists here. 
a lot of tattoo shops. Actually, Bang Bang's brought a couple of artists from Istanbul to his shop in uh in New York. So um dope. it's definitely cool, yeah, to see, you know, all the different kind of tattoos that people get. And um, you know, it's cool to, you know, bounce ideas off of different people that you run into out here about what they get. A lot of different hoopers, you know, being on the national team out here, you see a lot of guys with different type of tattoos too. So it's definitely cool. It's definitely cool uh, culture out here with tattoos. For sure. I mean, from the outside looking in, I feel like I feel like when you look at overseas guys, a lot of them like or at least guys like born in, in these different countries and stuff go with like the the sort of like you were saying with the Iverson where it's like piece work, not so much like yeah. going at it with a full sleeve. Like we see, you right. know, guys in, in, the, in the NBA and, and back in the States where it's like they'll come out one summer and boom, you got a full full ass right. sleeve. Like right. I feel like a right. lot of the work overseas is a lot more like thought out where it's like each piece, like you're saying, has to have that like significant, like whether it's cultural values or, or just historical values in, in each of the pieces yeah. that they're kind of getting. Facts. That's a hundred percent true, bro. hundred percent. That's, that's, if I had to break it down, that's exactly how I would break it down. Just how you did right there. So talk to me a little bit about, you were saying you, you have the stuff on the back. Uh, the only piece that I've really seen is, is the, the Jesus portrait you have on your back that you posted a while ago. Have you added yeah. to that? And if so, what else do you have back there? Um, no, I haven't added to that. I was actually supposed to add to that uh, this past summer, but I didn't have time. Um, so, you know, I'm a, I'm a eventually add, add to my back. I got a couple more pieces that I want to get done um, before it's all said and done. But I haven't added, added anything else to the back. I just have the arm, chest, back, and then and the left leg for the moment. But um, this summer I should have some free time. and. I'll definitely add a couple pieces this summer. Um, we just got to, you know, try to figure out exactly when, when I can get that done. Well, speaking of that, yeah, because you play with, and this is something that I like talking to, like, the guys about when I talk to, like, the ball players. I think it's super interesting. You play, so you play on the national team as well. So you always have shit kind of going on in the summer. Yeah. Then you have, and, and with, for anyone listening that doesn't kind of know the overseas game, when you have, like, there's multiple tournaments, you know, there's, there's right. different cups. There's different levels to everything. So there's really like your off season is, is I feel like way more condensed uh, compared to like guys back in the States. So yeah. how do you kind of, kind of find that like little area to squeeze in that time to get a tattoo? Cause you know, it's annoying. Like you don't want to be getting a tat and then having a whole tournament coming up and, and have to deal right. with, you know, taking care of it and whatnot. So how do you kind of figure yeah. out when you're, when you're available and when you can get tatted? Um, well, you know, our seasons over here go from our preseason starts in like the middle of August and our, you know, our championships usually end around early June. So it's, it's a 10 month season. Um, yeah. So I usually try to get something done as soon as I get back. Um, in those first two weeks, I try to set something up with, you know, whoever I'm going to get tatted with over there in the States. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Because, like you said, uh, you know, there's a lot of different tournaments, a lot of different games, especially being on the national team that um, you don't necessarily have, you know, the four or five month off season like you do when you play in the States. Uh, so you definitely got to try squeezing in. You definitely have to be really uh, strategic about how you're going to get it done, when you're going to get it done. Um, I mean, luckily and unluckily for me, the last two summers, I've had some injuries that have given me, you know, six to eight weeks of off time where I could really sit down and get those done and let them heal up properly. Um, mm. but it, it's difficult for sure playing overseas and, and coming back and getting some work done in the summer because you also want to take your vacations, you want to, you know, travel and do all these things, but you know, you can't be out in the sun with a brand new tat, you yeah. can't jump into a water and oceans and all that with the brand yeah. new tat. So, you know, you really got to, you know, sit down and, and figure out exactly when you want to get it done and how much you actually want to get it done because, you know, two weeks of that time or you could be taking vacations or doing these different things. You got to, you know, just let your, your tattoo rest and, and heal up if you want it to look the way you want it to look. So. Yeah. So what, talk to me about that. This is kind of like non-tattoo related, but I'm curious with like when you transitioned from playing ball, like in the States and then going overseas, <clears throat> do you, do you enjoy like this tournament setup kind of thing more or less than, than how the, the like basketball culture kind of is over in the States? Um, I actually enjoy it a little bit more because there's more to play for, you know, yeah. playing, playing basketball over there in the States. It's like you win a championship or you don't. That's it. That's all, yeah. all the hoopers want to do that. I mean, some guys hoop in the G league, some guys hoop in the league and you either try to win a championship or your season's kind of a bust. Whereas, you know, over here in Europe, there's mid season cups, preseason cups, 
There's, you yeah. know, most teams playing two different um, two different leagues. Like you play in the Euro League, where it's an international competition, and you're also playing a domestic league, which is, you know, whatever country you're in, you yeah. play in that kind of competition as well. So, you know, I think there's more to play for, and, you know, there's no – that's what prevents teams from doing, like, the whole tanking thing and, and just giving up on the season. Players are always playing yeah. hard, always trying to win games regardless of, you know, what your position is because you could always come out of nowhere and win one of these cups or you can come out of nowhere and, you know, win your domestic league even if you don't win the international competition. So um, I actually enjoy the format over here uh, a bit more. And I've seen, you know, some things where the NBA is thinking about putting, like, a midseason tournament into play. Yeah. Stuff like that, which, you know, I think that would be cool and give guys different kind of incentives. Um, but I uh, definitely like the, the way things are set up over here a bit, a bit better than over there. For sure. I've always looked at it because I've always looked at the FIBA game. I'm a, I'm a soccer fan. So I've always looked at it similar to like how the European soccer leagues are set up where they have like the yeah. same thing where it's like, you know, yeah. you're saying like you win your league, but you got to play every game because you're not at least in soccer. You're not trying to get relegated slash, right. you, you know, there's there's prizes for every single tournament. There's incentive to all these things. So it keeps everyone like right. kind of going for it. And there's yeah, no right. like tanking teams and shit like that. That's going on like back over here. Yeah. Right. Yo, everybody in New York, I need you to listen up. If you're looking for a place to get tatted, you're looking for some artists, you want to make sure you're not getting no whack fucking tattoos, go look at my boys over at First Class NYC on Instagram. Uh, they're located in Manhattan on Canal Street, so super close, uh, easy place to get to. You can take the train there. And my boy Mikhail over there is the shop owner slash artist in the shop, uh, and he's super talented, super dope guy. So make sure you check him out and check out all the other artists at First Class NYC. So uh, with the leg, you were talking about, um, I want to shoot back to your leg tattoo. You were talking about how you kind of like how people are getting like their sports inspirations or just inspirations in life, things like that. Are you looking to add to that piece and like add more stuff like that to that leg? Um, you know, since that one is, is thus far on that leg, it's pretty much family oriented, you know, my hometown about me. Um, I'm going to eventually add a piece uh, about my career, um, you know, how, mm -hmm. you know, my career has turned out, however way that goes. Um, you know, I never thought, you know, I'd be playing in Turkey. So, you know, I think that would be an interesting piece to add. And I don't know exactly where I want to add it, but, you know, I've been a pro now for nine years, played in different countries, six different teams. So, um, you know, and I don't know exactly where I'm going to end up next. So. I definitely want to add to it. I don't know if I want to add it to my leg um, because it's kind of like, you know, it's it's difficult to be honest because it's kind of like, you know, the beginning of my my family's legacy. I mean, my dad was the first one that became a, you know, sports icon, won mm -hmm. championships, MVPs and all these different kind of things. And, you know, I've done it in my own way in a different part of the world. And I think that is you know, also could be a cool feature to just have this whole leg be dedicated to that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I think that would be dope. So, yeah, so I, I, I've, I've had ideas about that, uh, you know, but you know, I don't, I'm not ever going to be one that's going to rush something. So, you know, I got to kind of see exactly how I feel. I got to talk to whoever artists um, mm -hmm. that I want to try to work with and kind of try to put that idea together so that it all flows correctly. Um, but I think, you know, eventually I'll definitely add something down there. Um, but for the moment, I don't think, um, I know exactly what that is yet, but definitely moving, moving forward. I'll definitely add to that, to that leg piece and probably go up to about mid thigh all the way around and, and have the whole leg done. Yeah. Well, I think like you're saying, I think that's why you see that your work is like quality, especially that leg piece is just cause you talk about like the time it takes and, and how it took you like the year to kind of wait and, and figure yeah. out all the ideas, make sure it blends and whatnot. Cause it takes time. Like people always, that's like something we always get. I always get asked in the DMs and shit. And it's like, Oh, like I'm going this week. What should I get? And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, how, what do you yeah, ask right. me? Right. Like, you know, you gotta, you gotta one, know what you want. And two, like you should be looking up with Instagram today. And that's, that's something that like right. aggravates me. I, I know it aggravates a bunch of artists too. You got like the accessibility to look at hundreds of artists, right? So you should not be just hopping in the car and, and, and going to, to some random dude, you know, and getting your, your tattoo right now you should be doing your research figuring out who could right. do your style who could kind of do what you need uh right. and get that piece and i think i think you and keith that connection i think was perfect because i think he absolutely killed that piece uh i think that's one of the one of the sickest like like sleeves in the basketball world appreciate you appreciate you and yeah like you said bro you gotta 
you definitely got to sit down and, you know, think about exactly what it is you want and exactly how you want it to come out. Because you can't just get in the car, pull up and be like, I, I think I'll do this today. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because then you're going to leave the shop and be like, oh, it looks dope. And then after about five, six days, you're going to start thinking like, damn, maybe I should have yep. should have done a little bit of more research about who I wanted to get it done with, what I wanted to get done. So, um Definitely, you know, being patient and, you know, finding exactly what it is that you want to do and try to lock that idea in so that you're in love with, you know, what you're about to put on your body. Because once it's there, I mean, and it ain't leaving unless you, yep. you know, want to go to extreme, extreme measures to get rid of it, which, I mean, then there's no point to get a tattoo in the first place. So, yeah, um, I've heard that hurts more too than, than actually. Yeah, I heard so. that shit too. So yeah. <laughs> definitely don't want to go through that. No, thanks. Yeah, facts. Have know. you have you ever looked into into getting tatted like in in the countries you're playing in? Like, have you looked at, at any artists uh, yeah. in Turkey? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I'm definitely gonna get something done here. You know, I spent four years here. Damn near half my career has been here. So, uh, you know, mm -hmm. above all else, I you know I don't know exactly what's gonna happen after this season. Maybe I continue here. Maybe I don't. Um, but you know, four years is a long time to be somewhere. It's the longest I've ever been in one place in my career. So. I'm definitely going to put something uh, on my leg from, you know, my time that I spent here. And I think the best way to do that is to get, you know, one of the best artists from this country to, to get that done. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm definitely going to look forward to getting that done. Just don't know exactly when or where, uh, what exactly it's going to be yet. Um, because there's so many different things that can happen from, you know, this moment on. But, um, you know, it's definitely something that I want to do uh, going forward. For sure. I think that'd be dope to kind of like you're saying, that's like been your home almost for, for the last four yeah. years. And, and to kind of let a guy from Turkey show his skills and kind of have that on your right. body would be sick. Yeah. Right. All right. So I want to shoot back uh, to 2013 when you get drafted. Right. So the way that the league looks in 2013, tattoo wise and culture wise it is completely different than right now. Completely right. Different. So. Talk to me, give me your insight on that. And just like when you came into the league, you know, it was, there wasn't really like, I'm trying to think of in 2013, who, who were the guys in 2013 that were crazy tatted or, or, or like considered crazy tatted back then? Or that uh, you just, you, you know, you, you noticed had tats. 2013, I would say the guys who, who were like tatted was uh, JR. JR had yeah. you know, a bunch of tats. Uh, Birdman, Birdman had, sure. you know, a bunch of, bunch Everything. of tats. Mellow was tatted. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to think of who else at that time who was really like sleeved up and had a bunch of tats. I can't, nobody pops into my head. It's like, you know, I'm sure there was guys, maybe Wilson Chandler, you know, he's, mm -hmm. he's somebody who's had a lot of tats. Um, but I think JR was the first guy who was like, I mean, not the first, but when I got in with the guys, I was like, damn, like that's them some tattoos right there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then I got to play with him my second year. Um, so then I really got to see all the tats, you know, that he had. So, um, you know, he was definitely sleeved up yeah. everywhere, back, stomach. You know, I don't think, I don't remember if he had anything on his leg. Uh, but he definitely had, like, from neck down to his, like, his belly button. He was, he was tatted like that. Yeah. Was there any sort of, like, peer pressure or, like, influence from JR? Like, trying to, like, get the rook and, and be uh -huh. like, yo, like, come on, let's go? <laughs> Nah, nah, he's he's chill. You know, he's always been really chill. He's never, you know, forced anything or, or try to get dudes to get tatted up. Um, but you know, he's he's just a chill dude. You know, he yeah. if you want to get tatted, he'll point you in a direction or who somebody that can get you tatted. But if not, he's just gonna be the same dude. So there was no peer pressure. I don't think in any of the teams I ever had, uh, you know, that I played over there, there was no peer pressure on on young guys to get tatted up. At least back then. I mean now. I think the culture has is, is changed so much that, you know, everybody is like, man, when are you going to get tatted up? Like, it's an actual yeah. conversation now. As soon as you get, like, when yeah. are you going to get tatted up? You know, it's funny because I remember uh, my last year in the league, I think it was like 17, 18, 18, 19. I don't know. One of them years. And uh, Jason, uh, JT, got uh, only had the two joints on his wrist. Yeah. And I was like, yo, when are you going to get tatted up, young boy? He was like, Man, shit hurt too much, man. I'm not getting tatted. Now this yeah. man, <laughs> man, one of the top tats in the league, his whole damn bag, his leg. Yo. So, you know, I think just the culture has changed so much now that, you know, it's a, something that when you do get to the league, it's like you, 
you know, you want to express yourself in this way and try to be as creative as you can be to have, you know, one of the top hats uh, in the league and have some of the best artwork. So I think it's cool, you know. No, for sure. I think it's sort of like like the fashion like wave that we saw yeah. in the last like five, 10 years. I feel like it's sort of like the same thing in that where it's like, you know, you, like you were saying, you want to be the dude with the best hats. You want to have like right. the aesthetic of, of having like dope tattoos and just and just having that like cool look. Um, yeah, right. And like you're saying, JT fucking went from I remember it was just the two wrist pieces, like super clean right. cut, dude, right. nothing. And then it was like one summer boom the fucking the leg and now the whole yeah. back and yeah. it's like he just got one uh i haven't seen pics of it yet but literally like a week ago just got now to the back of his neck he, he has the, oh, the his back like going up to his neck yeah oh, damn. so he's oh, not crazy. playing around he's really he's really going for it but you know who's the craziest one though jordan J- J- jordan clarkson bro that man went from yep. zero to 100 yep. the quickest i have ever seen bro like yep. everything was clean then next day everything both arms yeah. neck everything he went he got a lot of vc points and went crazy with it so <laughs> that's always yeah no it's, it's always crazy. the comments is is vc like gone he has he yeah. has two he has the uh now a few on his face he has oh he does uh, like an ambigram yeah so it's like a mix of words like a nice like big piece and then he yeah. like put shit like on top of it and on the bottom of it um and then he has, like you said, from literally from like there, yeah. straight down. There's like that's it. There's no space. <laughs> yeah, that's that's crazy, bro. Yeah, Man. but that's that that whole Lakers down. squad. Uh, that whole like yeah, crew. Facts. Lonzo facts. was clean facts. and then went crazy. Facts. JC facts. clean then went crazy and facts. then um, fucking Kuzma. Julius Randall too. Randall yeah. went crazy too and has a bunch of tats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young boys are just got paid and. <laughs> got tatted. It's cool though. That's wild. Yeah. Um, for you, was there ever a moment? So you're talking about like that. Was there ever a moment when you you kind of got first got your first paycheck or or you know got you signed got your first signing whatever, and you you were sitting there and like, what was your first like, like I'm gonna go spend this. Like I feel like those guys, you, you kind of they get their paycheck whatever, and like you're saying now tattoos are in their head where it's like yeah. like once I get paid, I'm gonna hit up that artist. I'm gonna fly him out like and boom, yeah. I'm done. Um, for you, when you, was there any like times where if there was tattoos, that'd be sick. If you had like a story about that, but if not, was there ever like, like you went and got like a sick car or like jewelry, some shit like that? I mean, yeah, when I got my first, I got drafted and I got my first, um, uh, advance. I went and got a car. I went and got a Panamera. I was like my dream car growing yeah. up. I always wanted to get one of them. So you know, I got drafted first round. Got a good, pretty good check, and um, I was like, "Yeah, I gotta, I gotta go get that." So that was definitely the first thing that that I went and did with my with my paycheck, with my first check. I went went and cashed out. Cat had to do a cash too. Had to go <laughs> straight. Yeah. Cash. So yeah, that was that was my first big big purchase. That's fire. All right. So to like wrap up here, I want to ask you a question that we we kind of ask everybody, um, and that's just how much do you think you've spent on your tattoos like collectively throughout the years? Mm. Uh, I would say about probably spent about twenty five thousand at this point on tattoos. That's you know, the, the, a solid number. Yeah, I mean the solid. two. It was like I think four k each day for my leg, something like that. Four k forty five hundred each day for my leg, something like that. Then my back piece was another, another good thing about ten, because that one took a long time as well. And then the other ones was a couple thousand. So, uh, yeah, probably around twenty, twenty, twenty-five thousand on tax. But, uh, I would say it's it's definitely worth it. I mean, it's definitely my first piece. I ain't paid for. My dad paid for, but it wasn't nothing crazy. Um, Mm -hmm. but I would definitely say to, you know spend a good amount on it because it's going to be there forever and you don't want to look at something and be like <laughs> damn i should have just spent a little more on that so it looked the way that i wanted it to look so um yeah it's about about 20 25 all right yeah that's that's like you're saying I, I think that's a very respectable like number especially i mean you like you were saying you're not like a guy that's covered covered you have like your pieces yeah. but i think like you're saying you gotta a lot of people don't realize that like it it, it takes money like 
I have like I'm saying I don't have I have right like three, these these couple pieces and for me I'm like 3k in already on on like tiny shit so it's like right. you start going you start going to like these certain artists start getting these crazy pieces these bigger pieces it's like you're gonna be spending money if you want to keep that like good artwork and have the quality product yeah facts and as it's as the culture is growing, you know, they're getting more and more creative and more people doing it. And the elites of the elites are just, you know, staying there. And the, those artists, yeah. if you want to get work done by those guys, you definitely going to have to, you do have to definitely going to have to pay a little something because, you know, these dudes be booked out for like a year down there. Like, yep. so it's to get one of these top artists, if they have time that they can fit you in, I mean, you're definitely going to have to spend a little, a little bit of money to, to get some, some good artwork done by you know somebody that knows what they're doing for sure all right man that's that's all i got for for today all i need from you i uh, appreciate you coming on bro appreciate you spending a little time with us uh good luck for the rest of the season uh and appreciate good luck just in the future with everything you got going on yes sir bro appreciate you having me on here my guy of course